All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna take you guys around the yard here in the Philadelphia area. And we're gonna look at some of the trees that actually have the ability to fruit from dieback. Uh, and we're gonna look at some of the varieties that really don't have the ability to fruit from dieback. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because every variety is very different. And it's very important, I think, to know and share with you guys some of the varieties that have the ability to be pruned really hard or can be killed by the cold and still re-sprout from the base or re-sprout and fruit in that season. Um, so for many of us, that's really critical because we just maybe live in a very cold place or maybe this is a good lesson for you guys out there who are trying to get fruit along your fig trees. And as my general recommendation has been, just keep pruning to a minimum. You know, pruning as we prune, the more we prune, the more difficult it is the following year to get our fig trees to fruit. And that's across the board with a lot of fruit trees, guys. In the winter, when we do our winter pruning, when the trees are dormant, the hormones change. And it, really the hormones dictate and tell the tree the following year to grow and grow and grow. And it's typically very healthy vigorous growth and this could be a nice benefit right this could actually be a good thing for some of you guys maybe if you're trying to set up the structure of your tree in the case of the fig there's something called fig mosaic virus that really affects the trees and how they grow and how healthy they are and how they fruit and it's a problem um, if you do the rejuvenation pruning that i mentioned where we cut them actually really hard really any hard pruning they respond the following year with very healthy growth. So it's a, it can be a nice benefit, a nice positive thing. But typically if we do summer pruning, pruning in the active growing season, which is very similarly, we could just call it pinching in the fig trees case, or we have called it pinching in the fig trees case, that changes the hormones in the trees uh, in a way that helps them fruit. So, by doing this hard winter pruning uh, or getting them killed by the cold, whatever it is that kills them, they love to respond the following year with very healthy, vigorous shoots that don't fruit. And I've talked about in other videos, I call them water shoots. They kind of revert to a state of juvenile. They become very young, it seems like. There may even be a bit of a hormonal imbalance between what's on top of the tree and then what's on bottom, right? Every tree and every plant has to have that balance. And if that balance is out of whack, the hormones are out of whack, right? Things aren't gonna operate correctly. So for me, at least, and a lot of growers in the past, we have at least discovered some varieties that even though they do get pruned really hard, they can still fruit from the base. Now I wanna show you some of the varieties, but I do wanna just preface all of that really quickly by talking about how we can get them to fruit from the base, because sometimes you might be lucky and the tree will fruit, will get killed all the way down to the base or you'll prune it all the way down to the base and you can walk away and the tree will still fruit and that's great. But most situations that's not the case. As we've talked about in other videos about forming the main crop and how we form the main crop, we, it's all about light. So if we have a tree, and this is somebody who reached out to me recently, her name, I think her name was Lauren. She reached out, to me, reached out to me on Facebook. She sent me a photo of her tree and she said, Ross, I just inherited this tree or maybe it was a gift from her kids. And they planted it in the ground and last year the tree did really well, but it did take some winter damage. And then this year now it's responding, as we talked about, when we take winter damage or we prune really hard in the winter, it responded by putting out lots of growth. And it was a very dense canopy, many leaves, many branches. And because of that, she was like, Ross, my fig tree is not fruiting. Can you help me? Well, of course it's not fruiting because it's all about the light. So what we need to do and what I would recommend with all of your fig trees, guys, if this happens, just thin out the shoots from the base to about five. Now, sometimes even five is a little bit too much. If you live like where I'm at, where I don't really get a lot of light here in these locations anymore because uh, the shade trees just keep getting bigger and bigger. You may actually want to bring that down to four. I do four, maybe even three, maybe even two, maybe even one shoot from the base. Um, 
Here's an example actually right here. This is a Texas peach tree. And it really has one shoot from the base. Actually, a lot of these lateral shoots that have come out from a lower height uh, are all from this main shoot. So this one came from below the soil and sprouted up and actually has fruit buds on it here that very, very soon will expand and I'll get to see a very small fig, which is great because in the past, this is not fruited. And I've had in the past four fruiting branches. I've spaced them properly, right? I gave them enough light. I did myself some staking, which is also a really critical point. It's not just enough to thin out the center here or thin out some of the shoots from the base. Why not stake some of the branches on a bit of an angle so that they're away from each other? And by putting them on an angle, the light is now coming in here and reaching a larger surface area of the branch. Rather than if it was straight up in the air, the sun's only hitting the top some leaves of the, of the tree. But if we open that up, well, we're going to have more sunlight in there, more photosynthesis. So that's what we need. And that's just something, an unusual thing that's happened this year is that, well, this one only really has one main shoot and it's actually able to fruit this season. So I haven't seen fruit on this one really in the past at all. And I'm happy to, uh, actually I did get some fruit last year, I think, but the point is, is that I'm really happy now that it's getting the light that it needs, even though it has died back from the base, it will actually fruit. This uh, Neruccio de Elba here right next to it, probably the total opposite end of the spectrum in that this is extremely easy to see fruit buds. It'll fruit in a lower light environment and it fruits very easy. Uh, so this one here, again, got killed all the way back to the base. There are many shoots. Last year I've had six on this one and all six of them had fruit on them. So this is one, one main shoot. This one had six. So you can see the difference there. And of course the quantity of the fruits and uh, even how early the fruits form uh, based on you know, just how easy it is to get them to fruit. So this Neruccio de Elba already has little small figlets on it and will probably ripen about uh, you know, 75 days from today. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let me show you guys now, as we just discussed really how to get this to happen. We've talked about you know, the specifics behind all of this and, and why this is such an important topic. Uh, so these are really, again, when I talk about some of these varieties, it, you could kind of boil it down to the varieties like this Neruccio de Elba is easy to fruit and doesn't require a lot of light to set the fruit buds. Whereas, you know, maybe this Texas peach, although it is producing fruit buds here along the branches, this one actually is more difficult to fruit and requires more light to set the fruit buds. Um, let's take you guys along. This is another example here of Colonel Littman's Black Cross, which a lot of people notoriously have had very difficult times getting fruit off of this particular tree because it requires guys a lot of light to set those fruit buds. And people in much larger and higher light environments than, uh, than myself, they still struggle with this one. So that's a critical thing here, guys, is um, every variety has that different light requirement. And that's kind of why we're going over this to talk about these really important details. I have found, by the way, that also black Madeira when re-sprouting from the base, although this is very thick and very dense. Look how many, you know, shoots are coming up from the base here. It's way too many to get the light that it needs. But even if I were to thin this to four shoots, it's very difficult to see fruit set. Uh, one of them that actually fruited this year, I was surprised to see, although it only is one shoot from the base, is Calderona. So Calderona down here has the fruit buds present. That's really nice to see. So I'll get to get some Calderona figs off of my in-ground tree from dieback, which is, you know, it's a pretty bold statement, isn't it? I mean, who would have thought that Calderona has the ability? But again, it's all about the light. If I would have had that Calderona, instead of having one shoot from the base, maybe I had four, there's just not enough light and it wouldn't fruit. So, and in fact, last year it didn't because of that. So every tree is a bit different and every tree has to behave or needs a special treatment here. Uh, Smith, this one here is notorious for not fruiting after dieback. 
This one in Colonel Lippmann's, you, may, you just have to think that something else is going on besides the light. Maybe it is a hormonal imbalance. And, you know, maybe it is even something else that we just don't know about. So Smith, Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross, they're just a struggle. And um, for that reason, you know, I love the fruits off of them. But they can be a real pain to actually get some fruit. These two back here seem to do pretty well as uh, Violet de Bordeaux, that's Nero 600M, and this one's Pastelier. So Pastelier does indeed have fruit buds and it, it's had some in the past. But typically what you'll find is really the, the trees that grow very quickly, they have a more difficult time to fruit, and uh, typically they'll require a bit more light to actually set the fruit buds. You know, the Ruchillo de Elba actually is a dwarf fig. It doesn't actually doesn't get very big it's a smaller tree so that you must think really has to help in this this whole process although you know that's not this, the case for every dwarf fig but I imagine most of the dwarf figs a pretty easy time fruiting from dieback I would guess um, here we also have some trees on the west side and these are the trees that really get more light than anywhere else and I've seen much better results in this planting here than any other planting in the yard. Um, actually, the planting in the north part of the property, those trees typically get less water in the soil and they lignify in time and they actually survive the cold. But a number of the trees actually have survived the winter this year, unprotected in this west side of the property. And there's even some bravas, but uh, we have lots of main crop that's well ahead of the trees that I'm about to show you. Even the Neruchiola de Elba that we just looked at, because the tree survived the winter, it is like three to four weeks ahead of, you know, the Neruchiola de Elba. And I would say the Neruchiola de Elba is the furthest ahead out of any of the varieties from dieback. Actually, maybe you could even put an argument in there for Elisu Huye. Here's actually fruits that have formed um, from last year's growth that survived. This is suckers that formed. Uh, these suckers actually have a ton of fruit on them. That's really great to see. Super happy about that. Then we had, this is really interesting. Then we had this big branch that survived the winter, unprotected. And this thing actually doesn't even have any fruit on it yet. The fruit buds are just forming. So this one's actually, even though this is a larger silver gray, you know, older wood as the, as the base of the tree, the suckers here that were only 18 inches in height that somehow survived the winter uh, are way ahead in terms of their fruit production for some reason. Now the suckers though also on the tree, as I believe this right here actually back here is a sucker. This thing really doesn't need a lot of light. It's incredible. This is bred with Celeste. Although I would say that Celeste does need a lot of light. Typically, um, some of the Celeste that you can find don't. And there's some kind of gene that this tree here inherited. It is probably the best I've seen in terms of fruiting from dieback is LSU Huye. And the other one that's really good is LSU Champagne. Um, although Champagne, I don't think is as good but it's up there. And this LSU Champagne, as we discussed, I wanna limit the base to right to four, four branches or five branches. That's the general recommendation. This one has like nine or 10, and all nine or 10 of them have fruits on them. And some of them even have double fruits that are forming, which is just nuts. Uh, so there's something with the Celeste, and I've, that's why I'm really trying to make it a journey of mine to do this, um, to find more Celeste heirlooms. Uh, you know, it would be a really fantastic, they were right. LSU was right to breed uh, with Celeste. There's a, there's a reason for that. Um, I would really like to breed with Black Celeste personally, but I don't know if all the characteristics that I'm seeing that are really nice with, you know, LSU Huye or LSU Champagne Maybe you could breed, um, man, maybe it would be nice to breed Black Celeste with uh, LSU Huye or something like that. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure, but 
The point is here, guys, let's move on to some of the other varieties. And I just want to mention these three trees before I let you guys go. Actually, there's four trees right here in a row. And that these did all get killed at the base. Um, there's White Marseille, there's Brianzolo Rosso, there's Barbalone, and then there's Lampira 1. Across the board with these four trees, I've had a lot of difficulty getting them to fruit in the past. Even from dieback, um, or from dieback, I should say, they do tend to set their fruit buds and then don't produce fruit. And I've always been really scratching my head at that because if they set the fruit buds, they should just fruit, right? And uh, that's just not the case. So last year I did some pinching and then the fruits finally formed, but only because I did the pinching. If I didn't do the pinching, the fruits just do not continue their progression, right? There's small fruit buds along the branch, but they don't expand to a larger size and actually produce fruit. Uh, they just stay there on the branch like that. And I was just dumbfounded. Uh, so I did the pinching, which again is a type of summer pruning, changes the hormones to encourage the trees to fruit. And voila, it worked. So this year I've taken it upon myself. I just believe now at this point that without doing any of the pinching on these four trees, these four varieties, I'm just not gonna get any fruit. And I think there's probably a case to be made for a lot of the more difficult varieties to fruit. So, you know, Neruccio de Elba is one of them. And even I would say maybe even the Celeste that we looked at, maybe even Pastelier or you know, some of these guys, even though we've done the right steps, we've come in here, we've thinned out the base, we staked the branches, they're getting enough light, the fruit buds formed, they need a little bit of an extra nudge in the form of, of pinching. So that's my recommendation there, guys. Um, the final thought, I think, to this whole thing, uh, there's so many varieties, guys, that in this plot are working themselves out coming from the base or let's say surviving the winter but there is a number of trees that just require so much more light or they're planted in an area that doesn't get enough light and it's just a total loss cause so that's my point is that we really should keep pruning to a minimum i don't know what variety you guys have so you know giving the recommendation of keeping pruning to a minimum is going to be the right recommendation um, now, can you, of course, prune really heavily or have them get killed like this? Yes, because you could see here is examples of trees that are fruiting from the base and uh, getting that hard pruning. So, you know, there is a blanket statement that could be said, but at the same time, it's not right for every single situation. Just like I think, you know, pinching you know, people like to say that pinching doesn't work or pinching doesn't do anything. And these people are so closed minded. So, you know, clearly, and I, I would say in this particular situation with these four trees, that pinching is a must, is an absolute necessity. Here in my yard, in this location with these varieties, absolutely critical. Um, so for some people to say that pinching is never something you would do, well, that's just foolish, right? And it's the same thing with hard pruning, right? The general recommendation is you shouldn't really do hard pruning and it should be kept really to pruning the tips, the apical buds, leave the lateral buds. And if you have to take off the lateral buds, so be it, but leave some sort of structure there on your tree. Um, but of course, the same thing could be said in that the opposite could be true and that somebody, and of course there are people just like myself, who are pruning really heavily and still getting the fruit set that they want. So guys, thank you so much here for watching. Uh, this was Ross. Please hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog. You got this far? You're not subscribed in the blog? Check it out, figboss.com. Go down to the bottom, put, put your email in there and um, you'll be notified every time I make a blog post. So thank you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.